flint striker or flint and steel. Got the flint, now I gotta make the steel. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Hi, Thack from Thack Ironworks. Let's get right into it. All right, I have a piece of drill rod. Drill rod is very high carbon steel. And forgive me, I did not actually look at the specs on what it is, I just know it's high carbon. Uh, 9 16 is the diameter that I happen to have, a fairly big chunk. Um, and as far as flint strikers go, you can use much smaller diameter than that and just do something that simply wraps around the hands. You don't really need that much. There's not much involved with making a functional flint striker, but I want to make something that looks a little cooler. So this is all about image today, kids. So here we go. Let's see how it goes. All right, my first heat, I flattened out an area. Now what I'm gonna do is about halfway in between there. I've got about an inch and a half on the inside edge of the anvil and I am hitting half on, half off on the inside edge here, creating a notch. So now I'm drumming out this finger. I've got kind of a pointer. Like that. certainly feel the difference forging high carbon steel. There's a, it's a lot harder to move a piece like this. Um, so I need to do a number of heats to get that brought out. Getting close, um, I'm working this at s just uh, slightly under a bright yellow heat. It's like a dull yellow heat. Um, I don't want to bring it up to the point where it could burn and um, with high carbon steel like this, as soon as it starts burning, you bring it out and ha hammer on it, likely it's gonna crumble and fall apart. So you have to be a little more cautious. Uh, the downside of that is it's already very stiff to move under the hammer because of the high carbon, um, but it's harder to move then because you're working at a slightly lower heat, but that's just the nature of it. So it just takes a little longer to get your shape. All right, my anvil is about six inches wide. I need it to be just about six inches. It's gonna actually come down a little bit there. So I'm pretty much at length. I'm just gonna round that out now. That's that part, now the tricky part. All right, so I've got the rod between my legs here and now I'm just coming back out three eighths of an inch to the center here. And I've got a tiny little round punch. Go down and now I can see the dark spot where it's coming through there. 
just punch that plug out. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I got my hole punched there. All right, so now I am going to take my the little hole there and I want to do a cut. I don't think I have to explain why I put this uh, block of steel here on my handle. So now I've just cut away. I wanted to create a little ear out there. Um, I didn't want to just notch in with the chisel and leave uh, a sharp edge there, which could cause a stress fracture by putting a hole there. I, I kind of alleviate that whole um, stress area there and just opening that up. So now I just got to clean that up and then we will move on. All right, now I'm gonna do um, what's gonna be the finger hold on this thing here. So we need to measure in two and a half inches, uh, create a benchmark. Looks like basically the inside of my hardy hole there is two and a half inches, but if you don't have such a configuration, you might wanna set up a mark like this. Okay, so now we're taking our piece and I'm bringing it to where that mark is there. And I'm just eyeballing that bit. Bring this back. Like so, what could be simpler? Confused? I know I am. Um, now I'm gonna go and cut this off here and we'll, we'll finish the shape. Try to find small enough bending forks to do what I'm trying to do here. Awkward.
really gets fiddly at the end. I think I'm going to call it though. Got a more or less pleasing shape there. Uh, remains to be seen if this will actually fit into my hand, my index finger going through there and the other two fingers in there, my pinky resting on there. Hoping that's gonna work. It's a little hot for me to stick them in right now. Uh, while we're at it, let's do the heat treat, which is pretty simple. We're just hardening, we're not doing tempering. Okay, so I brought it up to uh, critical temperature now. I'm just gonna quench it into the oil. Incidentally, last video I did heat treating on, I stuck my gloved hand into the hot oil. That was fun. Thanks for the comments on that. I really enjoyed your uh, making fun of me. So I'm just moving this back and forth in the oil. This is gonna harden this piece and we're gonna leave it brittle hard. Uh, it's now probably still, I don't know, six, 700 degrees at this point. I'm gonna go right into the water and finish the quench in the water. Bring it down to room temperature. There we have it now. Does it fit in my hand? Holy moly, it does. Still a little hot. There we have it. So, pretty cool design, the way it fits in the fingers and everything like that. This, um, as I said at the beginning, is a pretty elaborate design. Really does not need to be um, anything like this. You could make basically just a ring that wraps around your hand with a, with a little bit of a flat edge on. You could be a third of the mass of this and it would be an effective flint striker. This one is kind of the Cadillac though, and it's got a capital B and the B is for bitchin'. This is a bitchin' flint striker. So, does it work? That's the question. Now we gotta make some char and get our flint and let's try this thing out. All right, so we have to make char and this past weekend I put on my favorite jeans and squatted down and blew out the crotch. So uh, I know that ripped jeans are all trendy and everything like that, but I don't think anybody wants to see that sort of action. So what I'm gonna do, and these are old school jeans too, 100% cotton, you don't see these very often. Doesn't have any of that spandex crap in it. So well, that's what you need for doing char is 100% cotton. Cut through. Just take a pant leg off here. So now I'll go to the forge. Just gonna roll this up. Set it into the forge. Okay, so the cotton is ignited. See if I can get pretty much the whole surface burning here. Okay, I've done this in a while. Hopefully, it is going to work okay. So, everything is on fire there. I'm putting it into a tin can, and now I'm putting the tin can upside down on the forge, nice tight seal on the bottom. What that means is that is an environment with no oxygen in it. So very quickly, um, that's gonna burn itself out and hopefully turn into nice black char throughout. So we we'll just let that sit for 10 or 15 minutes and hopefully we'll have some char and be able to test our flint strike. Oh, it's getting hot. Okay, you get the idea. My cameraman pointed out that the B should stand for badass. Good point. Okay, so there is Flint Striker. This, as I said, is a very decorative version. You can do much simpler ones, but the, the basic principle, the fundamentals are remain the same. You want something very high carbon and you want a straight edge there. <clears throat> I did not mention that, that I went to the grinder and ground this to be perfectly flat and you want sharp edges on there. Something that you can work against the flint with and get lots of sparks. Um, 
So that's how this works. Um, I'm going to include this in my hoplite, my Greek hoplite kit, um, as far as I'm now getting all the accoutrement for that particular suit of armor. But I'm going to have this as a soldier would be carrying something like that. So the way it works is with the flint, the steel, and of course, char. Um, there's different ways you can do that. The way I do it is with um, cotton and you've seen where I lit it in the fire and then you suffocate it and you should be able to get these black charred pieces which very readily will catch a spark. So that's it for this video. Um, if you are one of my patrons on Patreon, we are gonna do a little cheat sheet at the back uh, kind of thing with a tracing of this and more, some more dimensions and stuff like that. Um, so you guys in the cheap seats here just watch it and hopefully you can extrapolate from that how it fits into your hand. Um, but if you're my, one of my patrons, we'll give you a little bit more back, uh, back room information there. So that's it. Thanks for tuning in. More videos to come. Uh, please comments below. Thumbs up. Do all that stuff. You know what to do. I'll see you the next time. Back out. See ya.